Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Majora's Mask. Last time, we freed Snowhead from the icy grip of winter, and now we can do quite a few more things around here that we couldn't before. Let's see, around here, haha, -ha, hidden treasure. You could see that with the Lens of Truth, but I didn't feel like taking that out of my inventory. Let's see, I think there's a couple, couple more of those gossip stones around here that weren't around before, or at least you couldn't see them before. So let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, well I was kind of there, but well, if you haven't, well this would be a hint to you to do that. Okay, let's see. There's also another one over here. Uh, if you recall, at the top of this place, there was a Goron who was saying how they took a ramp to get up here, and, well, this is what they were talking about. Whoa! Too many! Ha-ha! Eat that! Okay, let's see, and up here we got another one, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, we were talking to that other frog down there with the Don Jero's mask there. Oh, well, yeah, they could do that, too. Great Bay Temple, though, we haven't been to yet. So, yeah, we're still going to have to find a way to get over there. But, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, by the way. Well, actually, yeah, I can show you this. If you keep on going all the way up there. Or up here. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't get back up to full speed now. But, uh, yeah, there's uh, that's how you get to the top the other way. Okay, let's see. There's one more thing I want to do, and then we'll head to uh, Romani Ranch to help out uh, Romani there with the ghosts or whoever's coming for her cows. I don't know. But all right, let's see. So, yeah, just uh, this time now, there's no more, uh, what is it, snowballs falling on you or trying to knock you off this thing. So that helps. But uh, we still have those 15 stray fairies that we need to bring back home. So let's go do that. So yeah, it is kind of unfortunate that the cutscene after completing the dungeon and all that takes you all the way back to uh, the mountain village there. So you can't go directly back here. So, but uh, okay, so with this great fairy, well, we get the spin attack, but if you're playing the Nintendo 64 version, you get double magic. So, basically, they switched the powers that they give you from the first and the second temple there with the Great Fairy. But all right! <laughs> I love the look on his face there. Something with the... I don't know, maybe it has something to do with the way they render the eyes or something. I don't know. But, uh, well, I don't have my sword on me. But you can also do a technique called quick spin, where you just, yeah, spin around with the analog stick and press the B button. Unfortunately, I am pretty terrible at doing that. So, I mean, I will try to do it sometimes, but I can't do it very consistently, unfortunately. It would be really useful if I could, but sadly, I cannot. But alright, we're done with our business here. We got all our magic back. So now, let's head on over to Romani Ranch. You don't actually have to be there by 2 a.m. 2.30 p.m. is the actual time when the event starts there. And you know what? Let's, uh, let me make a save here because there's something else that I want to show that could happen up ahead here. But uh, let's see, okay, so yeah. We'll just keep on using Goron Link for now. You could summon Epona with the song, but we don't have a long way to go. So let's see, okay, get all the way up here. And, ha ha! Okay, how's it going? Ah, there we go. Oh, what are you gonna do? Oh, okay. Right, right. Oh, okay. Yeah, you want to watch out for that. 
Oh, yeah, I find arrows in the grass all the time. What next? Rats that drop bullets for me to shoot? Well, they did have a rat with a bomb tied to it here, but I was thinking of another game. Actually, you know what? Let's follow her into the barn here. And, uh, yeah, let's play the inverted song of time. Bring the flow of time back to normal here. So that way things can proceed a bit faster there. And then we'll follow her into the barn there. Oh yeah, and in the barn here we got some, uh, yeah, some rupees you can pick up there. But, uh, okay, what do we got? Oh, okay, I guess she just says the same thing. Let me see this. Uh, can I pick up the cuckoo? Is that what the cuckoo's thinking? No. No, the cuckoo actually doesn't have any thoughts in their head. So unlike, you know, with the uh, Mask of Truth, if you pick up an animal or a small animal there, you can read their thoughts. But uh, no, no, that doesn't uh, apply here. So let's see. Yeah, we got all these ghosts around here. You can see them on the minimap there. And they're going after the barn. Oh yeah, by the way, the uh, the barn is locked. So, if you're inside, I just figured I'd show like that little bit of dialogue you get there, but uh But yeah, I mean, so anyway, with the ghosts here, let's see what happens if you fail to stop them all. If you're having trouble with aiming the arrows because you can't get a target lock on these guys, you could play the inverted song of time to slow things down. That way these guys will... Uh, what is it? Well, they'll slow down. And you might have an easier time hitting them. So, let's see. If you fail, this happens. Just thought I'd show the alternate cutscene here. Let me know about any alternate cutscenes that you know about, viewers, because... Yeah, I play things pretty straightforward for the most part. So, I mean, there's probably cutscenes I'd never even think about. This one I knew, but, you know, there's some others that I don't. Like the one from the clock tower opening up from the observatory and all that. Oh, what do they want with her? I don't know. They take the cows? What are these guys, like UFOs or something? Aliens? How would you define an alien in the context of Hyrule or Zelda, Termina, whatever? I mean, we have so many, you know, anthropomorphized creatures that, you know, what would be alien in that context? But anyway, yeah, I'm sure she'll be fine. Don't worry about it. But unfortunately, because, yeah, we didn't save the cows... It's unsuccessful there. But, uh, okay, let's see. Yeah, let's uh, advance the clock to day two then. So let's see. You only need to fend off the ghosts until daylight. But unfortunately, it's too late for that now. Why the ghosts didn't just drop in right on top of the barn, I don't know. But, well, they made off with the cows and every and Romani. Well, let's see what's going on over here. Hey, how's it going? Oh, yeah, I was kind of there. If only. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. Hmm. But all right, yeah, so that didn't work out. So, oh, wait, hold on. There's one more thing that I want to show you. Things are a little different on day three, having been here and done some more things that I didn't do the first time we came here on day three to get the bunny hood and all that. So let's see what else we got going on. So let's see. Yeah, let's wait a moment here. Okay, so yeah, on day two, Romani is gone. Day 3 at 6 a.m., she magically shows up here. There's no, like, aliens dropping in, bringing her back to us or anything. She's just here immediately upon 
6 a.m. Not even at 5 a.m. She, she's not here. What, what do you mean? What kind of practice? Hmm. So, yeah, her dialogue changes a little bit, but... Yeah, I don't know what they did to her. Maybe you wiped her memory or knocked her unconscious or something? I don't know. But all right, let's see how uh, we're supposed to handle this little mini game for real this time. Okay, we're back. So this time I just decided to stay outside before the ghosts start showing up here. If you're good with your aiming with arrows, then just play the song of inverted time like I have. So that way everything will move around a lot faster. Otherwise, yeah, just walk around and start shooting arrows at them. Although, I want to wait for them to move at least a little bit. Because once you kill them, they'll just respawn at their original spawn point. So, there's no point in just shooting them right when they're going to respawn in front of you anyway. So, okay, this looks good. You don't actually need to be on Epona to do any part of this minigame, really. Seems kind of odd that they give you the tutorial for this thing like that. With Epona, without the need to use her for this at all. You can just stand right around here if you're running low on arrows. Yeah, we can get a whole bunch more there. But otherwise, yeah, it's just pretty straightforward. Make sure you shoot these guys before they get into the barn. There's only the one ghost over here that'll actually come from behind there. So that's like the only real trick to this whole thing as far as trying to make sure you got everything covered there. I don't think you can attack them with, like, melee weapons. Okay, that ought to be good, because by the time they could actually get re remotely close to the barn now, they would, uh, it'll be daytime. So, we're getting there, and fortunately, even without the inverted Song of Time slowing things down, you only gotta go through a couple rounds, and you're good. We are good, right? Maybe I should shoot that one just in case. And that. Or, or they could just die right now. Why not? Hooray! So, much happier ending this time around. Thanks for uh, doing nothing with your bow there. Ah. Oh, okay, uh, sure, why not? So, for completing the minigame, we get bottle number three. Or at least in the Nintendo 64 version, this would be the third bottle that you could get. The fourth bottle in this version, I believe. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, sure. She said she called me Little Hero. Ah. So yeah, the milk works, I think, identically to Ocarina of Time. You get two drinks of it for the one bottle, and let's see. Yeah, and it restores five hearts each, so that's pretty nice. But I don't really care about that, so I'm just going to drink them all now so I have the empty bottle ready to go, and we will need empty bottles in the near future, where we're going to be going next, the next uh, mini-dungeon. And let's see, yeah, let's actually uh, advance the clock to 6 a.m. at this point. Or, well, to get it to the third day, that is. Or to the second day, not the third day. No, I, I don't want to go to the third day. Not yet. I'm thinking a little too far ahead of myself there. Okay, so let's see. Uh, is anyone outside? No? Okay, well, maybe they're inside or something. Ah, there we go. They're both inside. Okay. Okay, how's it going? Oh, good, good. 
Oh, okay. I think she's talking to Romani there. Oh, well, I could just warp there. I wouldn't need a wagon ride. That seems oddly specific. But I suppose you could uh, uh, come back here at 6 p.m. And spoiler alert, you're going to want to do that eventually. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? Oh, okay. I, I can't warp from here. If you talk to Romani, you still get the same discussion there, regardless of who you talk to, to uh, advance the, or, or what is it? Yeah, the dialogue there. But uh, yeah, I do want to hang around here, and I will just advance the clock to 6 p.m. So that way, you know, we can just go straight to that. Don't worry about the sword that we left with the blacksmith because he'll still have it by then, and there's still more that we can do with that. What's the worst that could possibly happen transporting milk from Romani Ranch to Clock Town? Find out next time on Let's Play Majora's Mask. This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.